Hi, thanks for joining us at DevNet Create. Today's talk is titled, Don't Let Your Data Go to Waste, AI ML Applications for WebEx. I'm Jeff Lovensailor. I'm a DevNet creator. And if you enjoyed today's talk, uh, be sure to check out previous years. Joining me is Brendan Bowden. Hi, Brendan Bowden, also a distinguished engineer with Presidio. Uh, been using Linux for way too long and doing a lot of development and automation. So glad to be here. Okay, quick agenda. We're going to have an intro. Uh, we're going to talk about some use cases, uh, why we're here. Uh, AI ML, which is what's going to be the, the meat and potatoes of today's talk, and then uh, get right into a demo. Okay, so what data are we collecting? We're taking uh, WebEx Teams messages, which contain the raw text, the senders, receivers, the rooms or teams that message is sent in, along with the timestamps. Uh, how my organization can leverage that data. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, sentiment analysis, so this tracks positive and negative scores. Are my employees happy? Are my customers happy? And trying to correlate that into the events that took place around that time, so we can kind of predict uh, what worked and what, what didn't. Uh, word trends. What words are being talked about more than they used to be or maybe less? So this can help with staffing or training your employees. Uh, some use cases, wildcard search. This is a drop-in search engine replacement uh, that utilizes full text indexing and fuzzy queries on messages by any field. Uh, knowledge base, identifying what messages are a question and trying to find the answers to those questions, piping that into a knowledge base to cut down on uh, repeat Q&A. Uh, sentiment analysis. This is where we're running uh, AI ML uh, algorithms over the messages and trying to display those trends over time. So a big part of the uh, application um, that, that's going to run this is, is a machine learning model. So a little background on machine learning. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but um, you know, just to give you some ideas. Uh, machine learning, of course, is, is uh, automatic learning um, and, and having the computer be able to improve its own uh, understanding of a data model uh, just by uh, feeding in additional data without you having to do additional uh, programming on that. So for our purposes, instead of looking for a set of positive words, a set of negative words, and trying to trend it that way, we've actually fed in, here's a bunch of positive sentences that people have tagged as positive, here's a bunch of sentences that are tagged as negative, and you know, have the machine actually do the analysis and, and come up with its own understanding of why it should classify things in those ways. So a few things that you can normally do with machine learning, um, you know, classification is kind of what we're doing here, uh, which is uh, you know applying user sentiment to things. Uh, that bucket also uh, covers things like uh, image recognition, facial recognition, uh, is this email a spam or not, that kind of thing. Uh, clustering is is a little more um, detailed, where you're trying to put things into a lot of different buckets. Um, let's say you have a, a list of a hundred different. Uh, possible, um, you know, objects that could be in this image. You want to, you know, find out which one it is. Um, it can also be used for things like demographic analysis. You know, look at look at uh, you know age and height and things of the people as they're walking through a, a retail um, retail uh, sales floor. Um, and then regression is things like um, you know doing predictive monitoring, watching a watching a threshold of, of bandwidth, for example, over time, and being able to dynamically pick out where the outliers are. Um, but without you having to specifically um, you know, configure that. So if you do backups every Friday, you don't want to get alerts on that. The machine learning model can, can you know, potentially pick up on that instead of you having to program it in yourself. Very important for any machine learning uh, application is feeding it a good data set. Um, the, the models are only as good as the data you're feeding in. It's the old garbage in, garbage out model. So um, usually uh, you want to find some data that's already been tagged by humans. Um, you know, this sentence is positive or has a low rating, this sentence is, this sentence is, is uh, you know, neutral, and, and have the machine learning uh, algorithm, you know, pull all, all that information in and analyze it. So, um, you know, that's what Google does, for example, with the, with, with the captures, being asking you, um, you know, what, what are the images with pluses so that, you know, it can train its own model as, as to, um, you know, which ones uh, have which. Um, just uh, if you want to play with this yourself, uh, Kaggle.com has a whole bunch of free and open source data sets to um, load in and try for all sorts of different applications. 
Uh, a lot of different things you can do with AIML. Uh, the one we're using here is called natural language processing. That's uh, the, the, the part of machine learning that has to do with uh, analyzing sentence structure and paragraphs and, and the intent of, you know, behind a sentence versus um, you know, just the structure of it. A lot of other things you can do with machine learning, of course, uh, expert systems, chatbots, uh, machine vision, and even things like robotics and process automation. Okay, so in terms of the uh, machine learning frameworks we're using, um, we use Python for, for, for this use case, of course. Um, this particular system, we used um, a pretty easy to learn framework called Scikit-Learn. Uh, it's not a neural network library. Um, it, is, uh, the, it is a very easy to learn one that has a lot of utility functions, easy to get started with, with, your, uh, with your project. There are a bunch of others. Um, you know, TensorFlow is one you've probably heard of. Uh, PyTorch, Keras, these are all um, you know different ones that, that add some GPU support, add actual neural network um, uh, kind of modeling, and, and it's all uh, you know great to experiment with. And there's even some others uh, that I listed down there below. Um, you know, they're, they're more specialized in terms of uh, you know OpenCV and DLib are for um, image processing. Uh, Spacey is very heavy on, on natural language processing and so on. So the, the two machine learning applications that we're using for, for this demo in particular are sentence classification, um, which is where we're trying to identify, um, you know, which sentences in those messages are a question. You know, was there a question in, in the kind of top level message of a WebEx thread and kind of break out, you know, that all the other messages must be answers. Um, and then sentiment analysis. So take all the messages wherever they are and, and kind of categorize them into you know, positive, negative, and neutral, and uh, give you um, some kind of confidence of how um, how likely it is that that message actually is positive. So if it says positive and negative, and they're both 50%, they're probably, it's it's probably actually neutral, it just didn't pick up on it. But if it's positive 99%, yeah, it's, it's pretty sure it's positive, and you, you can, you, can uh, you know, take that. Um, Couple other libraries I use just to hit on them uh, briefly. NLTK is a great one. It's got a lot of um, uh, kind of uh, pre um, pre collected uh, collections of words and, and and data that you can use to train models with. Um, in particular, we needed the the stop words, which I'll get into later, um, which which helped the machine learning um, uh, algorithm do, do its processing, um, and then um, some other things about tokenizing and and processing words into kind of their base forms. Uh, SK Learn is is that scikit Learn that I talked about. It's got all the all the meat of the uh, machine learning system, and then a couple of utility things that, that that are great to use even outside of machine learning models. Uh, Pandas, in particular, I kind of think about that as the programmable Excel. Um, if you're dealing with any kind of large amount of data, Pandas is great to use, and NumPy is uh, uh, part of the same project actually um, that uh, that has some uh, mathematical um, functions and and. Um, um, speed and speed of uh, processing uh, mathematical data. So not going to bore everybody with the code on the video, but if you want to uh, check that out, it'll be in the slides. Um, so the first step in, in doing one of these projects is importing uh, your data set. Uh, the data set I used here is actually from a list of uh, IMDB reviews and, and you know, uh, kind of classifying, okay, well, um, you know, the, a review that had you know, one star is, must be negative, and a review that's 10 stars must be positive, that kind of thing. Um, use basically standard Python uh, file operations to load it in, uh, brought it into pandas, did some transforms, and then um, pre-processed the data um, to make the uh, machine learning model a little bit easier to, to uh, train on the data. Um, in particular, some, some terms that you're going to see, see around everywhere else, a document, uh, that's the actual text of the message. And then target is kind of the classification. So the target here is either one of its positive or zero if it's if it's uh, negative. And at the end, you split the data the data set into a test portion and a train portion. You train on the train, and then you use the, the test portion to make sure that the, um, the the machine learning model is being able to tell that um, you know, the the, the, the uh, data lines that it's uh, pulling in are are actually being classified correctly. In terms of pre-processing, there's a couple things you do. Um, this is English sentences, so you want to break out the words into their own uh, array elements, so we call that tokenizing. Also strip out things like punctuation, unprintable characters, uh, emojis, uh, HTML tags, things like that. Um, lemmatization uh, is also important. Um, lemma is, is a um, lexicographical thing. It just means basically 
um, you, you want to take all the forms of a word and reduce them to their base form. So take off all the all the you know plurals and and uh, tenses and stuff, and bring it back to just the base word, so that the computer doesn't have to try and keep track of all the multiple variations of it. And then remove a bunch of uh, you know words that don't give any uh, classification uh, information to the model. Those are called stop words. Um, once you have all your data in there, you do what's called vectorizing, which is uh, take all the words that, that are in that data set and break them into math. So basically what you're trying to do is come up with a big list of the frequencies of words and patterns that are in there. So you can either look at one word, you can look at multiple words, um, just look up n-gram, that, that, that's what that means. Um, there's also uh, the concept of just doing raw counts of words versus what's called TFIDF. Again, I'm not a data scientist, don't ask me what the math is, but basically it's adding a weighting based on, um, you know, is this word just, just popular in this message or is it popular across all sorts of different messages? And if it's, if it's in a lot of popular mes uh, positive messages, then it must be, uh, you know, tending towards, towards positive um, sentiment for, for that word. And you always want to test multiple combinations of these things because different data sets and, and different uh, uh, algorithms may actually work better. Uh, a certain data set, it may actually work better just to look at uh, single words and, and only the counts within and, and, and not go into, into the, the multiples and, and the TFIDF. So you always want to try multiple combinations and then do the training on them and, and pick the one that gives you the best accuracy. Uh, there's also this concept called hyperparameters. Um, again, don't ask me what any of this really means in terms of in terms of the math, but uh, basically what you're trying to do is uh, you give it a bunch of different uh, methods of um, learning and and uh, you know how does it classify data that's important versus not important, um, and and trying to come up with the best combination of which uh, parameters work for your data set and which ones don't. So this one is basically um, doing a random search across all these different combinations of, of parameters to try and figure out which ones actually make the most sense and then, and then tell us which one is, is the best output. Um, at the end, you get your classifier. And the classifier is what we can actually use to pull in the, uh, to the WebEx messages and then tell whether they're uh, positive or negative and, and how confident it is on it. While you're testing the hyperparameters thing, um, be prepared to use a lot of CPUs and, and a lot of memory and, and be waiting a while. Um, just saying. All right. Uh, so once you have your classifier, um, it's pretty easy to actually just load in um, some uh, you know, test data and actually uh, be, be uh, using it. So in terms of um, you, you don't have to retrain everything every time you want to use this. Uh, that would be a little nuts. So at the, at the end of the functions on the previous slides, it actually saved all of that information into these uh, job lib structures. And uh, at the beginning of your program, you can just load them in. And then once you have it loaded, actually doing the classification on, on each of these things is um, very quick. It's on the order of milliseconds per message. And you can see down there, uh, you know, a couple of just different, uh, um, you know, sample messages that, that uh, you know, we fed in and, and, you know, did it see whether it was positive or negative and, and you know, how, uh, how positive and negative did it seem to be. Um, this particular model, uh, the closer, the, the, the higher positive you are, the more positive it thinks it is, and the, and the lower negative you are, the more negative it thinks it is. So, you know, you get negative 1.4 for, yeah, this is bad, and, and 1.2 for, yeah, that works. So uh, it's, it's doing a fairly good job there. Um, according to the, the, the training data, um, on the data set I found, it's getting about 91%, which is you know, pretty good for, for uh, you know, something that's not even using a, a machine learning, a uh, neural net kind of model. Um, if you don't want to go through the whole uh, training process yourself, uh, there are services out there that have already done it, and you just uh, feed in data and, and it'll classify it for you. Um, Amazon Comprehend, of course, is kind of the, 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 the big one. Um, it uh, you know, lets you do uh, uh, sentiment analysis, which is what we're doing, but it also has things for document classification, detecting languages, even has a few custom modules in there for uh, extracting medical data and, and such. So that's something you'll, you'll want to dig into. Uh, there's a Python library called Boto3 that makes it real easy to um, you know access, and it gives you you know this, this kind of uh, JSON structure here that tells you whether it's positive or negative and or neutral and how confident it was, just like our model did. Okay, the demo we're going to be showing you today that ties all this together is called WebEx Business Intelligence. 
Uh, and there's really a few processes. First, we need to pull the WebEx Teams API to grab the messages uh, from all the WebEx spaces. Uh, we're also grabbing uh, Teams, uh, rooms within the Teams, the memberships, and the people, and just storing that in a, in a local Mongo database. Once we have it in Mongo, we're going to uh, index that database so it'll be quicker to find certain things. And then the third step, process in Python, this is where we apply the intelligence, whether we're grabbing questions and answers or doing sentiment analysis. We're just processing it there, uh, storing it in another Mongo database, and then we're going to display that in view and also publish to a ServiceNow uh, knowledge base. So this is what the application looks like. Uh, up at the top, you have WebEx APIs. This is uh, where the source of the information comes from. So we're going to be polling. Uh, these different API endpoints from WebEx and putting those into Mongo collections. And then down at the bottom, these scheduled tasks, these are the intelligence. So the Q&A, the cinema analysis, uh, we're scheduling these jobs to run and just putting that data in a separate database. Uh, on the right, this is our web app that uses uh, Vue.js. There's an OAuth portion that uh, logs the user into the app, so it pulls their profile, so it, it can run on their context, the team rooms they're in, uh, the messages that they can see, and so forth. And then we're going to display those in a different uh, view within view. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to go over to the demo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our app, WebEx Business Intelligence. Uh, as you can see here, this knowledge base, this is uh, one of our use cases. Uh, if I clicked add a room, I could search through all the rooms that I'm in. I've preloaded the Presidio code space. We have a ton of questions and answers there. We, we're getting uh, our users up and running on code, uh, a lot of Python questions. Uh, scanning questions is something you can do uh, on a scheduled basis or manually if you uh, want to run the latest and greatest. And if I click view questions here, it's going to go render a table of all the questions and answers that it found from that Presidio code space. So here's me asking about uh, some logs. Here is uh, somebody asking about the company API, which is the Unity Connection API. If I click on that, uh, it has the person that asked the question, the time, the amount of answers, uh, how it was classified as a question to start with, and then the actual answers itself. One way we can view questions and answers, another way is piping that information into a service now knowledge base. And this really cuts down on uh, repeat questions. You know, your users can just be pointed to uh, one place to go when they can get ramped up on all these frequently asked questions. Uh, the second thing I'm going to show you is the search function. Uh, there is a search function built into Control Hub, but it's more or less, you have to know what you're searching for before you find it. It's very specific on uh, the words, the person, the time, date, uh, where this is a wildcard search. We have the data in Mongo, so we can do whatever we want with it from this point. We can apply search filters. Uh, we can uh, limit it to a certain team and then spaces within that team. And I'm just going to clear the filters here and just do a search for the word Python. And submit. Pretty quick, it's going to go back with all the uh, matches for Python and all the spaces I'm in. And the third thing is the actual sentiment analysis. This is the intelligent part of the application. So, right here is all my teams. And what I've done is captured the sentiment over time and I separated it out into quarters. And for each uh, quarter, so it's going back into January of 2018, it'll give me the positive and negative score of the text in that space as it relates to the percentage of total messages. Uh, so if you see a trend here, uh, so this is the most positive, uh, I can kind of look and see what happened around that time and why users are more happy there and less happy here. Well, I can tell you, uh, 2019, towards the end of 2019, well, we were living in a different world. Uh, 2020, January to March, that's when COVID hit. And you can tell the positive sentiment in the rooms really took a dip. Uh, people were trying to stay hopeful, so there's not as many negative, but you know, there's just a dip in the positivity here. 
we got back to normal a little bit, and then this is where uh, you know a lot of the work from home started to kick in. This is around like Christmas time. You start getting a little higher. But this is the kind of intelligence that we're trying to build into WebEx and kind of the things we could do with the data. Uh, once we have a positive negative score, we correlate that with other events and kind of figure out why. Okay, our takeaways for this, uh, I have listed some GitHub pages uh, for the Presidio Code team, uh, along with my personal uh, GitHub page. Uh, I also have a bunch of repositories on Code Exchange, uh, which you'll probably see this pretty soon. Also, uh, WebEx Teams SDK, which we use to pull the messages is here, and all of the machine learning libraries that were used in this example, SciPy, Pandas, NumPy, uh, all the data sets that we've we've used uh, to help us train the models. Uh, links below. I want to thank you for joining.